يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد عباد الله اعلموا ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار عباد الله a lot of times we talk about how much we love rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we narrate the stories of the sahaba the stories of the tabi'in the stories of the tabi'i tabi'in the stories of the early generation until today we know people who express the love of rasulullah sallallahu their love of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but have you asked yourself ever how much rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved his ummah we're talking about someone whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed him paradise Allah has forgiven his past, present and future sins in the Quran. Inna fatahna laka fathan mubina liyaghfir Allah laka ma taqaddama min dhanbika wa ma ta'akhkhar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said indeed we have forgiven your past, present and future sins. It means a person who can comfortably say, you know, my life, my future, my paradise is secure. Therefore, I should not worry about anybody and anything else. Rather, the Messenger of Allah completely expressed other than that. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed his love for his ummah and all levels. He showed his love for the sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in and he showed his love for the people who would come after the sahaba of nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for example an nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was talking about people like ourselves who never met the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam look what he said about us Look how he expressed his urge or he is his passion of meeting and seeing us. كما في مسند أحمد والطبراني وحز صححه الألباني رحمه الله قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وددت he said the messenger of Allah said I wish if I met if I met my brothers. قالت الصحابة the companion of the messenger of Allah رضي صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضي الله عنهم قالوا أولسنا إخوانك يا رسول الله of messenger of Allah you just expressed that you wish to meet your brothers are we not your brothers are we not the people that you wish to meet قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنتم أصحابي say you are my companions إخواني say my brothers there are the people آمنوا بي ولم يروني he said there are people who never met me آمنوا بي ولم يروني they never met me yet they believed in me so we are among those people who messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم wish to see and meet them صلى الله ان يحشرنا معه يوم القيامه we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to resurrect us with the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He loved his ummah to the level that you can never imagine. Aisha radiyallahu anha kama fi ibn Hibban wa sahasanahu al-Albani. A beautiful hadith. Aisha radiyallahu anha qalat. نبي I saw the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم in طي in طيب النفس يعني whether he was a good mood or she saw the the true nature of him صلى الله عليه وسلم both of the interpretation are acceptable so Aisha she said I said to the messenger of Allah يا رسول الله يا messenger this is, she's talking to her husband she said يا رسول الله ادعو الله لي make dua for me this is his wife Aisha رضي الله عنها فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر لعائشة أو الله forgive عائشة forgive her sins forgive the sins that she committed publicly forgive her the, with the sins that she committed privately Aisha رضي الله عنها she was so pleased that she laughed so hard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم asked question قال أَيَسُرُّكِ دُعَاءِ يَا عَائِشَةَ Do you like my dua? Do you like the dua that I made for you? I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only to forgive you now, not only to forgive you, you know, for today, but for to forgive all your previous sins and the future sins, the one that you committed, you know, secretly and the one that you committed publicly. And Aisha radiyallahu anha did not commit any sin, but the messenger of Allah is making this dua, this dua for for Aisha. So she said, why would I never, why would I, well, how can I not be happy with such a dua? فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Listen to how much he loved us, صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَاللَّهِ By Allah, this is my dua لِأُمَّتِي for my ummah فِي كُلِّ الصَّلَاةِ in every salah. Subhanallah. Not some salawat, not in the fara'id only, not in qiyam al-layl, not in just in, in, in the filan the sunnah, but he said in every salah I make this dua for my ummah, for Allah to forgive our sins. And that's why ya ibadullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Thus we send you a messenger amongst yourself that it hurts him your struggle. When the messenger of Allah sees a member of his ummah are struggling, that he used to hurt the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يقول الله عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم. Messenger of Allah would feel pain if he sees any of his ummah, any of his followers, any of his members are struggling with something. And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always used to be concerned the well-being of his ummah because he loved us so much sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you remember the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if لَوْلَا أَنَا شُقَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي Say, if it was this not going to be, if this is not going to be difficult on my ummah, I would have asked them to use miswak after every salah or before every salah or before every wudu. And then the messenger of Allah said in the same hadith or in another hadith, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when he delayed salah till isha to midnight, qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the best time for my ummah, if this is the best time for salah till isha, if this was not hard for my ummah. So the messenger of Allah was always concerned the well-being for the ummah. He loved us so much that he used to even make sure the ibadah that we perform is something that we can all maintain. It. Remember, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one night he came for qiyam al-layl of his salat al-taraweeh in during the month of Ramadan. So some of the sahaba, they hear and they learn the messenger 
Messenger of Allah came out for salah, so they joined him in jama'ah. The next night the Messenger of Allah came out for salah till layl or qiyam al-layl or salat al taraweeh The rest of the community learned that the Messenger of Allah is also out tonight. So they came, they packed the masjid. And but the third night the Messenger of Allah did not show up. And the masjid was overcrowded. The Messenger of Allah after Salat al-Fajr, he said to the Sahaba who came to pray with him, Qala, I know what you did last night. I know you were waiting for me to lead you in Qiyam al-Layl in Salat al-Taraweeh. But I was afraid that if I keep doing this, this will be mandatory on you and you will not be able to do it. Subhanallah. He feared that if, he, if the people keep coming for Salat al-Taraweeh and for Salat al-Qiyam al-Layl, behind the Messenger of Allah, Allah perhaps may make this fard on the Ummah. So he said, I did not ask, I did not come out merciful and out of mercy for the Ummah. For his Ummah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the best is when you learn this hadith. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, this, this is one of the ahadith that every time that I read, that every time that I really reflect on it, I cannot imagine how selfless was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how much he loved his ummah. And this is the hadith sahih Muslim. يَقُولُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِكُلِّ النَّبِيٍّ دَعْوَةٌ مُسْتَجَابَةٌ عباد الله, my dear brothers and sisters, I want you just to pay attention to this hadith. Messenger of Allah said, every Nabi with no exception, starting from Adam alayhi salam, tell them to, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لِكُلِّ النَّبِي Not only, look, he, he said, لِكُلِّ rasul. I would assume that this dua was only giving to the Rusul and not to the Anbiya because Anbiya are lower level than the Rusul. But the Messenger of Allah said, لِكُلِّ النَّبِيِّنْ if for every Nabi there's a da'wah that is mustajab, which means one dua that he can ask Allah for anything and everything, and Allah will answer that dua for this Nabi. قَالَ فَتَعَجَّلَ كُلُّ نَبِيٍّ بِدَعْوَتِهِ However, he said, every Nabi, every messenger, Everyone use his dua. Ta'ajjal. He used it in this dunya. Nuh used it in this dunya. Musa used it in this dunya. Da'ud, Sulaiman, Harun, you know, Lord, alayhim salam, ajma'in. They all used it. But he said, Wa inni akhtaba'tuha li ummati. He said, but for I, I kept that dua for my ummah. Subhanallah. The messenger of Allah could have used this dua many times. He could have used this dua many, many times. He could have used this dua when his companions were slaughtered. And, you know, I'm sorry, when the messenger of Allah was, you know, almost be killed. In the battle of Uhud, he could have used for himself. He could have saved himself from Abdullah ibn Qami alayhi min Allahi ma yastahiq. But he didn't. He could have used for himself when the munafiqeen alayhi min Allahi ma yastahiqoon. When the munafiqeen accused his beloved wife, the person that he loved most, Aisha, for committing adultery. Not that she committed a sin or she, she, you know, she did something light. No, they say she committed not any sins, not any, you know, major sins, but she committed adultery. This is the highest level of disrespect. 
You know, a person can lie, that's a sin. A person can kill somebody, that's a sin, major sin. You know, but the most painful is when a man was told or when the rumors is circulated in the city and people saying that his wife committed adultery with one of the companions, with one of his best men. And the messenger of Allah has no answer, no revelation is coming to clear her case yet or to clear him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He could have used that to prove to Abdullah ibn Salul, the munafiq, that he is a liar. To prove to the people who are circulating his rumors that his wife and himself, they both innocent, his family is innocent because this was personal. The messenger of Allah was able to handle all, all tests. But this was one of the hardest thing ever. He could have, the messenger of Allah was able to handle when they call him a liar, when they call him a magician, when they call him this and that. He was strong enough but the moment that they said his wife, not any wife, because Amr bin As, he said, I said to the messenger of Allah, Man ahabbu nasi ilayk, who do you love most? Qala Aisha. I love Aisha most. Now, they're not talking about any person. They're talking about a person that he loves her so much. And he loves her father so much. You know, a family that like that. And they think she committed adultery. Messenger of Allah could have said, I'm using this dua to clear the air once for all. But no. Qala wa inni. اختبأتها لأمتي يوم القيامة فهي نائلة إن شاء الله من لا يشرك بالله شيئا سبحان الله He say my dua I kept it for my ummah and in sha Allah by Allah's will this dua will affect will benefit Every mu'min who comes to the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah that claims to be from all, from the Ummah of Muhammad who did not commit a shirk. Every mu'min who comes to the stage of Qiyamah who is saying La ilaha illallah regardless of the amount of the sins that he or she committed. The messenger of Allah said my dua will benefit that person. وَهِيَ نَائِلَةٌ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَا يُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا Now this is the level of love that the Messenger of Allah had for us. I mean, look. How much he loved us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, all his concern was his ummah, his ummah, his ummah. On the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when every Nabi cannot handle the Shafa, and every Nabi is pushing it away, Adam he's saying, it is not mine. Nuh he's saying, it is not mine. You know, Ibrahim is saying, it is not mine. Musa is saying, it is not mine. Isa is saying, it is not, it is not mine. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is my turn. It is my turn to speak. It is my turn to ask Allah. Inna, I, it is my time for shafa. And he makes sujood. And he praises Allah in a way that was never ever done before. And Allah says to him, Ya Muhammad, Rise up, raise your head, ask, and you will be granted. You know what he said? First thing that came out of his mouth was, Allah, Allahumma ummati, 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 ya Allah, my ummah, my ummah, my ummah. You know, subhanAllah, it's not like me, me, no, he said, my ummah, my ummah. When the people crossing the Sirat, when the people falling into Jahannam like flies, Messenger of Allah would be right there saying, asking Allah to save his Ummah, saying, Allahumma Sallim, Sallim, 
اللهم سلم سلم اللهم امتي امتي يا الله my nation my nation now this is the love that he had for us what do we have for him sallallahu alayhi what do we have do we follow his sunnah if you do then you love rasulullah sallallahu alayhi do you follow his orders if you do then you love rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam are you willing to give up everything for a moment that you may see him if the answer is yes if you were giving a chance to see him for a fraction of a second and you will lose everything else the true believers who love rasulullah they will say i would rather lose everything for a second or fraction of second that i can see him in this dunya sallallahu alayhi wasallam one of the best you know things that really comforts my heart when i'm going through difficult time and hardship that perhaps that allah will resurrect me for the love that i have for rasulullah even though i may not do uh, amal action that may qualify me to be with his companion to be in his company yet i hope allah will forgive my shortcomings will overlook my mistakes and he will resurrect me with him indeed it was the messenger of allah who said al mar'u person will be resurrected with those whom he loved in this dunya wa ushidu allah and allah allah is my witness that i love rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and i know all of you who are watching this love rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam nas'al allah an yahshurana ma'a may allah resurrect and gather us with the messenger of allah barakallahu fikum wa ahsana allah ilaykum wa jazakum allah khair assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh